Welcome back guys. Today we're installing the Solark and I've been super excited for this uh, because we've been wasting away power for a long time with this other unit. And uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, I have two inverters here. They're both 12 kilowatt inverters that also act as battery chargers. Uh, this one right here is the one that typically acts as the battery charger and uh, doesn't really have any loads that it's powering. And this one also is the one that performs uh, worse of the two, even though they're both pretty inefficient. So to get started, I've already removed some of the screws on this. And I've kind of designed this interesting uh, hinge system for this because I've been in here so many times. I'm going to disconnect a couple of wires so that you guys can, uh, can see in here. I've done this many a times. I've had to rebuild this unit uh, probably three or four times. Uh, I've had these relays fail. I've had the FET boards go bad. So either way, um, this unit, definitely not in our best interest to keep. Now, the way I wired this up originally, I have um, my neutral connection right here. And then this is my generator breaker. And this is my output breaker. So I've already gone into my panels and turned off all potential sources of power to this. So now I can disconnect these breakers and get the wires out. And there's just a one inch seal tight in the back here. And uh, we can get that pulled out, disconnect the battery cables and go from there. All right, so I've got all these wires disconnected. Now, previously I had some zip ties right up here by the connector to identify which ones were which. Um, but I need to pull all these wires through that connector. So I put on these over here, um, a red piece of electrical tape, because then I know that these three wires were the power out uh, that goes to the panels. And then these two that without the tape were the generator feeds. So uh, it's definitely important if you're retrofitting an inverter to make sure that you're identifying all the wires in case you need to use them in the future. There's a good chance we're gonna replace all this wire because I'm not really a fan of splices, uh, but still keeping in mind what was what, that way when you put it all back together, you can make sure you have it all connected right. That's gonna be important. So we're ready to take this lock ring off and uh, go from there. So I got the seal tight all disconnected. Uh, we've got it zip tight out of the way because I don't want it dangling down on any of my bus bars uh, down here because this is where I'm gonna be working next. I need to get these uh, cables removed from the busing. Uh, that way the inverter no longer has 48 volt power. And uh, from there, actually, it's pretty straightforward. We just have to take the screws off of the side and get this thing on the ground. And it's gonna definitely take both of us because this thing is over 100 pounds. And that transformer you saw on the top makes this thing top heavy as all get out. Okay, so we've got all but the top two screws on this inverter removed. Uh, we're almost ready to take it down. Now, planning out how this is gonna come down, we put a cardboard box. Actually, this is the box from the Solark. It's uh, almost the perfect height. Um, so essentially, we're gonna take out one screw at a time of these last two, and then uh, set this down on the box, and then we'll be able to manhandle this down onto the floor, and then we'll be ready. So all right, inverter is gone. This is the remainder of that. And uh, our plan of setting it on the box worked quite well. We only put a couple of dents in it. And like I was saying earlier, that inverter is over 100 pounds. Uh, but now it's down over here uh, on the ground and uh, not going back into service. So uh, yeah, pretty, pretty easy to take it down. So now we're ready to get stuff reconfigured. I'm gonna grab this French cleat here. This is the piece for the Solark uh, that mounts it. And that's gonna go somewhere about in here. Uh, but this bolt hole's not lining up. So I'm gonna have to loosen up this piece of Unistrut and scoot it over a little bit. That way this French cleat actually lines up real nice. I think it's gonna go right about there. Um, Cause then the Solark is gonna be a little bit above where this clips in. And then the height, the Solark is about 30 inches and this piece of strut conveniently is 30 inches. So this is actually gonna be a pretty easy install. Uh, the only thing I think that's gonna be different is this bracket right here might get in the way. But luckily since it's Unistrut, we could just flip that onto the other side with a strut nut and uh, that'll go pretty easy. And then we'll be ready to get this thing all put up on the wall. 
Okay, so the title of this video almost got changed to One Thing Leads to Another. Essentially, I have restructured all of my Unistrut here, uh, cut off a couple of pieces, but either way, um, we're back together now. And uh, essentially what I wanted was I wanted this set up to where if we got a second soul arc in the future, or better yet, when we get a second soul arc in the future, pending how well it performs, uh, I want it set up so that our spacing is ready to go for the other unit. So as far as my left to right spacing, I have all this set up on the strut with strut nuts, so that way this can all slide one way or another. Uh, I have my two pieces down here, uh, the strut nuts, set up so that, you know, depending on where that sole arc is, uh, it can move left to right. And I also mounted this using this piece of strut here, set up to where these top and bottom pieces can go up and down. Uh, so I have ultimate adjustability. And then this piece of strut right here is kind of in the way, uh, but it's holding up the Fox power inverter that's still running. But in the future, this will get eliminated. Uh, I'll probably eliminate this piece of strut as well, but that's gonna be pending on uh, installing a second soul arc and seeing how things go. But first, um, we're gonna get this tightened down and put in place and uh, essentially get this unit mounted up on the wall. So as you guys saw, we now have the sole arc mounted on our strut racking. Uh, I've got the door open and here inside I've already punched out a couple of the knockouts. Uh, these two right here, I put in some uh, grommet holes and uh, that's where I'm gonna put the battery cables through. So at this point, we're ready to start getting those battery cables in place. And if you take a look over here, I've got my 4 aught battery cable, and we're going to make a tutorial on how to crimp battery cable. So if you haven't seen that, click in the card in the top right corner, and uh, we'll show you how we do that. But essentially, we're going to run from that negative terminal in there and figure out our length. Uh, you imagine that will come down through like that. And then we're going to come down here onto our bus bars and uh, get the lug on there just like that. And then the positive will be pretty similar. Uh, it'll obviously come out of the positive grommet hole and then come onto this rear bus bar down here. And uh, from there, all we have to do is get our uh, seal tight conduit in place. And uh, from there, you know, we're pulling wire, we're getting stuff buttoned up. Okay, so we just got done crimping these cables. Uh, like I said, we made a video on this separate, so go check that out. Um, so now I'm gonna start with the positive cable. And like I said earlier, I've got my grommet hole installed down here. I'm just gonna pass the cable up through here like that. And then these are the screws that were provided with this. Uh, I know it's gonna be hard to see, but I'm just threading in that screw to this battery cable. But I will come back with a torque wrench and uh, I gotta look up in the manual what the proper torque specs for that lug are. But now the positive cable is in and I can also get in the negative cable now. Okay, so jumping down here uh, onto my connections to the bus bar, this is my negative bus bar, so that's gonna essentially go there, and then my positive bus bar will go you know, back on there. But Solark provided these ferrite cores, and quite personally, I think this is a little silly to do this, but their manual uh, literally says to put both cables through it and then install the, the battery cables. I think this looks kind of hokey, personally, um, I still got to get my bolts, but yeah, that's what they're saying to do is run the battery cables through there. And uh, like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of that, but yeah, those will connect on there. But before that's done, I'm going to want to turn off um, these bus bars so that they're not live. The other thing is I have the breaker here turned off before I connect it. You're not really going to get to see this because part of shutting this down, you know, it's going to be really difficult to film that. All right, so now we've got some uh, electrical and stuff in place. Uh, I got the battery cables in completely, as you can see. And uh, never mind the clamp meter, I may have run this a little bit just to make sure uh, everything was working. But either way, the seal tight is in place down here. I do need to get a strap. I'll probably just strap it up here or something because code states we need a, a support. Uh, within 12 inches of the termination. So in other words, this connector right here. That seal tight runs up the back and I'll need to get a uh, unistrut strap on that piece of strut right there. Comes into my gutter. 
I put a little tiny uh, ground bar you can kind of see up there. Uh, and that's where I need to connect this green ground wire still. And uh, we got our new wire pulled up and over and down. The gutters are a serious mess right now. Um, and that Solark feeds into this 60 amp breaker here. That's my main breaker. Um, the Fox Power used to feed this 40 amp breaker right here. That used to be located here. Um, but I removed that from here and relocated it into this panel. Now this panel right here is my split bus panel. If you look, there is a gap in the bus bars right here. So this actually acts as two panels. So this right here is my generator panel essentially. And this is my, um, it's just another like section. Uh, and this is the section that that Fox power inverter powers. So like the two pole 20 amp breaker here goes to uh, our hot tub for diversion, stuff like that. And uh, I just have this jumper going between the two. But then once I'm ready to turn on the Solark, I'll take these breakers out and disconnect that link and then turn on that 60 amp breaker uh, feeding power from the Solark to all of our loads on our ranch. So this is essentially our main panel. Um, and then this is the main breaker. And that's totally okay to back feed um, through code uh, because our main disconnecting means technically is now in the Solark. I installed my CTs for my PLC down here. These are uh, 0 to 100 amp or they'll also go 0 to 200 amps. There's a little uh, jumper in there. And um, those are in and wired into my productivity PLC. If I open this cabinet, I'll show you guys the links and stuff. So those go into this PLC for some further monitoring. The other thing I did was I put two of those CTs down here and that's on the generator power coming in. And then the split core CTs for the Solark are right here. Uh, and the biggest thing is there's an arrow somewhere on these. It's I think on the bottom, but that arrow needs to point at the generator. Even though I thought for some reason uh, the arrow should point the direction the power is gonna flow. Uh, if it were grid, you'd point it at the grid. And that's so that the Solark can do the um, peak shaving on the generator. And since we're in an off-grid application using the grid input, that's why we need those. So then those leads come up here into my panel. I go onto some terminal blocks here. And uh, then I have a CAT6 cable that runs up and over. That's uh, this wire right here. I don't have that in place yet, but I will need another flex coming down. And uh, essentially to bring the solar into the solar arc, I'm gonna do that at a later date. But there is over here on the corner of the container, a piece of two inch PVC that comes in and over. And essentially I'll just put an LB at the wall over there and bring that up and over into the end of this gutter. And that's how the power is gonna get in uh, for the time being. Uh, we'll probably change that eventually. I don't know, still up in the air on that. But yeah, at this point I'm ready to get my wires in. I have these two that are stripped on the end that come in from the generator. I have my two hots out and neutral and ground. So the generator wires, even though there's a generator input in here, we're gonna connect them on the grid because it's a 14 kilowatt generator. Um, you're only allowed 15, uh, my mistake, 50 amps on the generator input and 63 amps on the grid input. So that's why we're gonna use that. And then these wires here, will just connect onto the load terminals, neutral on the neutral bar, ground on the ground bar. And one thing that Solark is definitely, um, they want you to make sure of is that you only have one neutral to ground bond. Now this Solark is not uh, bonded in the unit. So that bond for me is in this main panel. Uh, it's this cable right here, it goes from here to here. And then this green cable, this other one to the bus bar, uh, that goes out to the grounding electrode and is bonded at this uh, chase nipple and uh, yeah, that's how we do that. So I'm gonna get everything connected up on the Solark and we'll continue from there. So we are all switched over. I've got my main breaker on. We're running on Solark power. And then over here, you can see Fox power is finally off, not drawing any massive amounts of idle draw. The Solark is in and on. I know it's kind of tricky to see this display, um, but this is all the statuses and stuff for um, you know the voltages and whatnot. And here's the home screen. I know it's real tough to see, but either way, yep, we are in and on. And if I open this up right here, you can see we've got the plastic protection in here, so I can't go in and touch any of the live components. 
Um, battery switch is on. Now this actually made an interesting noise when we turned it on uh, because it has the inrush uh, from the batteries. I think there's still capacitors in here that charge up immediately. This ferrite is still down here. I've got some zip ties on there holding it in, but that's all in. We've got the uh, Cat6 cable temporarily in here with the CTs. I need some more uh, one inch seal tight to run both for the solar lines and the communication cables. Uh, we're not doing the solar quite yet, but we will soon. Um, but yeah, that is the inside here. So we're up and running. We're pretty much good to go. Um, I do need to get on the phone with Solark a little bit about the uh, programming of this. There's a couple of things I have questions. Um, but yeah, we're going to go from here, give this thing a test, and then stay tuned because we're going to do a review on how we like this and how well it's performing. So if you guys enjoyed this install video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Other than that, uh, check out our website. We've been uh, working on that quite a bit www.currentconnected.com. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope you enjoyed and uh, comment below something you may have done different. Just curious what your guys' thoughts are. Anyway, see you later. Bye now.